I'm going to show the general approach to make this figure. It can be seen in two different ways. One is as a pair of intersecting tetrahedron. And the other is as a cube with X's on each face. Most of this build is made with balls and triangles like these. The ball has six square faces and eight triangular faces. Adjacent triangular faces have opposite magnetic orientation. That is that if this one is going clockwise, this one is going counterclockwise. I'll build up corners by effectively extending three of adjacent um, square faces by building up triangles on the adjacent triangular faces like this. To build up an edge, I'll extend the square on both sides, building off of the triangles, triangular faces like that. To make the cross, the intersection, I use the opposite two faces and build off of those as well. The ball I use for the joints and vertices comes from a slight variation of a procedure by Magnanaut. I've included a link to his tutorial. To build it, start with four stacks of nine ball rings and six ball rings, four rings high. The nine ball rings and six ball rings have opposite magnetic orientation. Pinch the top ring of each triangle of each stack to form a triangle. At this stage, I leave out a center ball from the nine ring, nine ball triangle. Uh, there's a convenient place to add it later. Put together three of the nine ball triangles to form this tetrahedral well. It'll be filled with ten magnets. Add one and push it to the bottom of the well. Add three more and push down to form a small triangle. Add the remaining six, one at a time. Put the fourth nine ball triangle on top and squeeze gently until there's no more play. The corner of three nine ball triangles come together and form a small, a three ball triangle like this. Add the six ball triangle on top of those. There are six places, six rows where three balls fit. Go around and fill all those. Now, Remove the top three rings from the stack of six. And the top two rings from the stack of nine ball rings. What's left are four wells, and each well holds four balls. The space at the bottom is the uh, gap that was left at the beginning in the nine ball triangle. 
So go ahead and put one ball in each well and push it to the bottom. And then fill the rest in with a triangle of three and just follow the magnetic field of the perimeter triangle. The last step is to remove this triangle of six balls. If you build it by building one tetrahedron and then adding the pieces of the second, you can either build it up as a series of corners plus middle balls, or as a series of edges plus corner balls. Either way, whenever there are a series of triangular uh, triangles passing between uh, a center ball and a corner ball, uh, there will be a gap, and the gap needs to be filled. I fill the gap in layers, building on the stack of triangles and moving toward the ball. I start in the center and work outwards. To complete the second tetrahedron, you can either add a completed corner piece to the face and then fill in the gaps, or else you can build up a series of triangles on the center balls. And then add a corner ball and then fill in the gaps. It generally works better to build up a series of triangles off of the center ball and fill in the gap at the corner ball. The number of triangles on the, uh, the edge of the second pyramid must be the same number of triangles that were used on the edge of the first pyramid. To build both tetrahedrons simultaneously, or to build it large, build it as the six sides of a cube. At large scales, this is the best approach because it won't be possible to rotate it to sit on other faces. To build the base, start with a completed intersection and then add the four corners. Build the lower part of each face. On large scale builds, both build both sides of the corner ball simultaneously so that the weight of the arms balance each other. Otherwise, the lower edge, the base edge, will twist and break.
add the center ball and then fill the gaps. If necessary, add a few balls right away to help stabilize the center ball. Now build each upper corner individually. For large scale builds, you may have to create some sort of support between this bottom corner and this upper corner or else the arms, the edges may uh, collapse. Now build the other corners. The final step is to complete the top. At this scale, it would be simple enough to use an intersection like this put it in place and fill in the spaces. The magnetic strength of the attachment points is strong enough to hold it in place. For intermediate size builds where the number of stack triangles off of each side of the center is as much as 15, hold the intersection in place with one hand, pick up individual magnets with the other hand, and put them in place to strengthen the magnetic attraction at the attachment points. Be sure to have a stack of magnets handy, a spiral of magnets handy, so that you can easily pick magnets off of it with one hand. For large builds, where the number of stacked triangles is more than 15 or so, you'll need to build the top differently. At such lengths, the stacked triangle will break when supported at only one end. You'll need to support the center ball, hold the stack with one hand while you build it with the other hand. When the stack of triangles reaches the attachment point, add individual magnets like I showed before to e increase the magnetic attraction at the attachment point. To support the center ball, use a stack of eight ball rings. Place it on top of the square face of the bottom center ball, like this, and then add the bottom square face of the top center ball to the top of the stack. When the build is complete, remove the stack from the build. I'll complete the build now.